Hello everyone, welcome back inside the Poker Go studio. This is The Big Blind. I'm Jeff Platt here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are just moments away from our finals with $15,000 awarded to our winner. But first, we need to slot in our final player into that matchup. Joining Alex Jacob and Norman Chad will be our top second place finisher from the semifinals. We have both second place finishers here today. First up, he lost to Alex Jacob, but he beat Justin Young. Barstool Nate, how are you, sir? I should already be in the final. I knew the answer to one of the questions. I wrote the wrong one. I have no idea why. My brain played a trick on me. So uh, let's hope that um, that I'm smarter than Ben over here. He's beating himself over it. That is Ben Yu. Ben lost to Norman Chad, but beat Barstool Smitty. Ben, how are you feeling? All right. Uh, this has definitely been a torturous sweat. Um, <laughs> I've come to realize that in poker and other forms of gambling they give to us, that the sweat is over right away, probably to avoid this feeling. But uh, yeah. Max, Can't get it off my mind. Max pain and max torture on the big blind. I can tell you this to enhance the sweat even more. Your final chip counts were just more than 1,000 apart. So it was very, very close. Right now, I will reveal our top second place finisher with a final chip count of 13,500. It is Ben Yu. Ben, congratulations. Oh. You do move on to the finals. I feel very fortunate. I think I made some mistakes that game. Even though I answered a lot of questions right, I made some mistakes with wagering. So I feel fortunate to just be in the finals. Barstool Nate, hate to ask, but what's running through your mind right now? Um, that one question. Know, it's my fault. It's my fault that I'm not there, and uh, yeah. I really wanted to bring down Norman Chad, but uh, hopefully Ben here can do it for me. All right, the job is now Ben Hughes. It is Ben Yu and Alex Jacob and Norman Chad. Our finals start next. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Big Blind. This is the finals. It is the ultimate test of knowledge on all things poker, Vegas, and gambling related. Now, we bring you our three finalists. They are in the money, but who will take home that $15,000? First up, he is our number one seed in the finals. He is the number one poker commentator in the world named Norman. He is Norman Chad. Norman, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm as good as I can get. I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy to be with these two uh, young, bright minds, and I'm just happy to be here. He is absolutely giddy. We can tell our other semifinals winner. Norman's seen him before. He defeated Justin Young and Barstool Nate in his matchup. Alex Jacob returns. Alex, you are reunited with both Norman and Ben. How's that feel? Yeah, um, I had a feeling I had a tough draw against both of these guys, so I'm not surprised to see him again. Um, it's going to be a great match. A tough draw indeed. Joining our two semifinals winners, the man who had the top second place score. He's had two second place finishes and one win throughout his big blind journey. It is Ben Yu. Ben, are you happy or are you annoyed to deal with Norman Chad again? Oh, I'm happy to be here. I wish you had led with... Players, we did lose a player on the last hand. Congratulations, you're all in the money. <laughs> that would have been a great way to do it, and we will keep that in mind for season two. All right, we do things just a bit differently for the finals with that $15,000 up top. Our three players today, we'll start with 20,000 in chips. We use a limit hold and betting structure still before a pre-flop action begins. Players will see the hands category. They can base their betting on their confidence level in that category. Levels one, two, and three consist of trivia questions in that topic. We'll have a question on the flop, a question on the turn, and a question on the river. Those questions get progressively more difficult once our players send in their answers. We open up another betting round. If our players know the answer, they just might fire off a bet or a raise, or if they think the bluff will get through, they just might fire off a bet or a raise. If two or more players remain in the hand after the turn, we will go to the river, which will always be set up as a tiebreaker question. For level four and level five, you will go against the house, where you'll get a chance to bet some or all of the chips that you have accumulated. More on that later. This is our fourth round. It is the finals. You have made it. You are in the money. You win the finals, you take home $15,000. Second place, 10K. Third place, five thousand dollars we wanted to put something else on the line as well we asked the world series of poker who they use 
for their bracelets. We went to that company, slightly out of our price range. Instead, we went across the street and we have this. Look at this lovely, I'll just set it back here on this lovely pillow. The tournament poker champion, Dave zooming in on this one. Price tag's still on. It's uh, $44.95, $44.95. All right, Daniel, one more time. Let us do it, hit the music. Here we go, level one of the finals. The blinds are 100, 200. That means you can bet 200 on the flop, 400 on the turn. Norman has the button, Alex in the small blind, Ben is in the big blind. Let's take a look at our first category. Martin Scorsese's Casino. Norman, you're on the button. You lead off our betting. You can raise, call, or fold. I will call. He will call on the button. Alex in the small blind. Raise it. He will raise it up over to Ben Yu. I really hope this tournament gets put on Hendon Mob. We could be the only three people with a uh, trivia <laughs> hold'em cash. We'll I submit call. it to Hendon Mob. How about that? Ben makes the call. Norman rolling his eyes, already annoyed with the festivities. Norman? Well, I caught a bad break already. Casino, apparently one of the four films Alex Jacob has seen in his life. So he's able to raise on this. Uh, I will just call. He will just call. We are three-handed to our first flop of the day. Let's see what that flop question is. Violent real-life mobster Tony the Ant Spilatro was the inspiration for the character played by what actor? It gives me a moment to uh, just mention that I actually worked for the actual Tony Spilatro uh, for about 15 months. Uh, it's a long story, but I can condense it uh, pretty quickly. It's pretty interesting while Alex is uh, typing in the Yeah, go answer. for it, go for it. Love it. Yeah, so uh, I was working at a paper shredding company uh, outside of Breezewood, Pennsylvania. Uh, at the time, I was living in a studio apartment, uh, probably about 450 square feet, small bathroom. Uh, had a wood-burning stove, however. And my next-door neighbor, uh, Vinnie Perrone, uh, he had been in a, he had worked on the docks, I guess, uh, the docks uh, off the, the biggest river in uh, Montana. And he met Tony the Ant's uh, nephew. Uh, and Tony the Ant's nephew, so Guillermo, uh, moved to I tell you what, Norman, maybe we bring you back um, for a different show, stories with Norman Chad, or maybe you can tell it to us in level six or something like that. For now, the answers are in. Alex, your first act, you can check or bet. Uh, I'll check. He will check it over to Ben. Check. Ben will check as well. Norman. I'll bet. Norman will fire over to Alex. I bet. I didn't fire. I just bet. I'll call. True, Norman. Norman bets. Call. Alex calls. Ben calls. Let's see the correct answer first. It is Joe Pesci. Taking a look at what our players had to say. Alex said Joe Pesci. That is correct. Ben said Robert De Niro. That is incorrect. Around to Norman. He said Joe Pesci, also correct. Alex and Norman move on to this turn question. What was the name of the fictional hotel and casino featured in the movie Casino? Answers, please. Events in this movie are surprisingly accurate. Recreation of what happened at the Stardust with Lefty Rosenthal in the late 70s. All right, our answers are in. Alex, since you're in the small blind, your first act again, you can check or bet 400. I'll bet. He will bet over to Norman. Call. Norman will make the call. Let's see the correct answer. That answer is, yeah, it's the Tangiers. Let's take a look at Ben Yu's answer just for fun. Ben had the Tangiers. We're gonna go ahead and guess. Then said, actually, the Ben Lagio. That is what we like to hear. Tangiers <laughs> is what we're looking for. What did our contestants say? Alex said, Lucky strike, just might have been on a bluff. That is incorrect. Norman said Tangiers. And with that, Norman Chad wins the first hand. Norman Chad, our chip leader, now 21,600 in chips. Ben in second with 19,400. Alex in third with 19K. Alex has the button for this hand. Ben is in the small blind. Norman's in the big blind. Let's take a look at this sans category. It is Vegas Attractions. Alex, you're on the button. You can raise, call, or fold. I'll call. He will make the call from the button. Ben? The Ben Lagio is open for business. Raise. <laughs> there we go. A raise Thanks. from Ben. Norman? Call. Norman makes the call. Alex? What's he smiling about? Alex calls after the raise. <laughs> I'm smiling about how you complained about how you hadn't seen Casino, and then you knew the, uh, the name of the casino. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody is in on this one as we take a look at our flop question. <laughs> 
The zip line known as Slotzilla is located where? Answers, please. Where is Slotzilla located in Vegas? The clock has been called. We need an answer. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, our answers are in. Ben, you are first to act. You can check or bet. Bet. You will bet. Over to Norman. Oh. Norman will lay it down. Alex. I'll call. Alex will make the call. Let's see the correct answer first. That answer is the Fremont Street experience. Checking in on what our players had to say. Ben said Fremont Street. That is correct. Norman, good fold. Norman said the Marriott Suites off of Flamingo. And Alex said Fremont Street. Also correct. Ben and Alex move on to our turn. Let's take a look at that turn question. The largest sports book in town located at the Westgate is called what? Answers, please. More than 30,000 square feet, over 350 seats at this book. Biggest in Vegas. All right, our answers are in. Ben, you are first to act again. You can check or bet. Check. You will check it. Over to Alex. I'll bet. You will bet, Ben. Raise. Ben with the check raise. Alex. How's that, Ivy League boy? <laughs> Alex will make the call. Let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is the Superbook. Seeing what our players had to say. Ben had the Superbook. Alex had the Superbook. Norman Chad weighed in with the Westgate Sportsbook, which would have been incorrect. So Norman is out once again. Ben and Alex move on to this river tiebreaker question. The main tank at Mandalay Bay's Shark Reef is one of the largest in North America. How many gallons does it hold? Answers, please. The classic goldfish bowl is two to three gallons, just in case you need some help with your calculations. How many gallons of water does the main tank at Mandalay Bay's Shark Reef hold? Closest to this, wins the pot of 3,200. All right, our answers are in. Before we see what Ben and Alex had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer, 1.3 million US gallons. Time to see how close our players were. Ben said 101,000, about 1.2 million off the mark. Can Alex get closer than that? He said 80,000 gallons. So he cannot get closer than Imbecils. that. Imbecils! And that Imbecils. means that Ben wins Play the bad, get there. Norman, do you want to share what you weighed in with? I, I, I would have lost. You can, I had it in ounces. Yeah, yeah, he said 59 ounces. So it is Ben Yu and Norman Chad tied for the chip lead at 21,200. Alex in third with 17,600 for this hand. Ben has the button, Norman in the small blind, Alex in the big blind. Let's take a look at this hands category. Two plus two, the old poker forum. Ben on the button leading off our betting. You can raise, call, or fold. Raise. You will raise it up. The snap raise from Ben Norman. A two plus two Hall of Famer is going to raise. What a surprise. I haven't looked at two plus two since 2005. You know why? <laughs> it's useless to normal people. Call. With that said, he will make the call. Alex? It's useless to everyone now, actually. There's just no good content there anymore. <laughs> Shots fired at two plus two. Alex. Maybe, maybe some of like oh, the, uh, the TV forums or something like that have good top stuff now. Alex is going to three bet this one, Ben. Grace. The cat from Ben Yu. Norman, would you like to call or I, fold? Yeah, I, I just want to point out, by the way, Alex, I did. I was wearing this today. Uh, where is it? Where is it? You see this? U.S. Poker Championship 1996. <laughs> That's the very first one. I was not there, but I was there 10 years later in 2006, and I called on ESPN Alex's USPC title victory, and I, I never, I said all good things about him. I made him out to be a combination of, of, of Stewie Younger and Winston Churchill, and he's never said thank you. Not an email, wow. not a note, not a phone call, not a pat on the back. I made him out to be a god. Uh, I'll just call the, the whatever it was, cat. 
Alex, back on you, the U.S. Poker I, champ from 2006. I believe I, was, I, believe I said thank you. <laughs> well, many, many thanks, Norman. Uh, the voice of poker, a legend. Um, what can I say? That was so sincere, but now you can say call or fold. <laughs> oh, oh, that's back on me with the format. Yeah, I call. Okay. Alex will make the call. We are three-handed <laughs> to this I thought you question. meant it was back on me to respond to Norman. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both. Which old-school statistician and poker player owns the 2 Plus 2 website? Answers, please. Who owns 2 Plus 2? Whoever he or she is not going to be happy with us after our discussion about this. I'm the only one who really bad mouth that I induced Ben into making one slightly negative comment. Thank you for the clarification. We need an answer. All right, our answers are in. Norman, your first act, you can check or bet. I will check. He will check it over to Alex. I'll check. Check it over to Ben. Bet. Ben will fire off a bet. Back to Norman. Call. The call from Norman, Alex? Uh, I think I messed up, man. I think I know what you're asking for. I'll call. Alex will make the call very hesitantly before we see what our players said. Let's take a look at the correct answer. It's Mason Malmuth, the creator, the owner of the 2 plus 2 forum or website or whatever you want to call it. Checking in on what our players had to say. Norman. Got it right. Alex said David Sklansky. That is incorrect. Ben said Mason. That is correct. Both Ben and Norman will move on to the turn question. Let us take a look at that turn. Amateur sleuths on 2 plus 2 helped to arrest Tony Carleo, a.k.a. the Bellagio Bandit, after he stole $1.5 million in chips from the Bellagio. Which other Las Vegas casino... Did he steal $19,000 from just five days prior? Answers, please. You give your answers. The Bellagio Bandit. Arrested with the help from 2 plus 2. How about that? He stole from another casino as well. Which casino would that be? All right, our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet. Check. We'll check it over to Ben. Ben. Bet. Ben will fire a bet of 400. Norman. He could have checked behind for once in his life. When's the last time he checked behind? You know? I swear to God. Uh, 20, call. Norman will make the call. Before we see what Norman and Ben said, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is... It was the Sun Coast. You see the celebration from Norman Chad. He had Sun Coast. Did Ben you? No, Ben said Caesar's Palace. That is incorrect. Norman Chad has won another hand, and we will shift from level one to level two when we raise the stakes next. Back here on the big blind in the finals, taking a look at the chip counts. Norman Chad, our chip leader, 23,600 in chips. Ben Yu in second with 19.8K. Alex Jacob in third with 16,600 in chips. What's on the line? How about a cool $15,000? Second place receives 10K. Everybody already assured of $5,000. And remember, this lovely World Series of, it's a poker bracelet thing. I'll get this opening of the box right one of these times. It says, the big blind champion. It's custom made, it's not custom made, it doesn't say that. $44.95. Retail value. All right, level two, the blinds are 200, 400. That means you can bet 400 on the flop, 800 on the turn. Norman has the button. Alex in the small blind. Ben in the big blind for this category. Pie gal poker. Norman on the button. You'll lead off our betting. Raise, call, or fold. Are you awake? Pie, yeah, pie, pie gal poker. <laughs> pie gal poker. I could have done Chinese. I could have done Mexican. I could have done liars poker. Pie gal poker? You know, a, a famous French proverb comes to mind. Qui court de lève à la fois, nun préogon. And that's whoever chases after two hairs what's, catches one. What's the proverb for raise, call, or fold? Fold. That will be a fold. From Norman, action, Alex? Um, does Junior get a walk if he folds also? Absolutely, he does. 
Oh, okay. So backs and back on me. Uh, there's a famous it French proverb. Not. Oh, God. Alex, please <laughs> save us. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, can I influence action like Helmut did two years ago? You can, you can call the clock, I guess. <laughs> okay, and, and buy Ben, yeah, in, and buy ben into next year's... Uh, I, big block. I just... I'm just trying to think of one thing that I know about Pi Gal Poker and hey, Nothing wrong with folding. That is completely allowed. Ben, you take down this pot with Norman Chad on top of the leaderboard. 23,600. Ben in second with 20K. Alex in third with 16,400. For this hand, Alex has the button. Ben, you're in the small blind. Norman, you're in the big blind for this category. Super system. Alex, you're on the button. You'll lead off our betting. Raise, call, or fold. I'll raise. He will raise it up. Action over to Ben Yu. Raise. The three bet from Ben Yu. Norman. Yeah, I used to joke uh, during the main event that you can't fold your way to the final table of the main event. We saw people try to do that. I folded the last hand. I don't feel like folding this one too. I'm trying to fold my way to a title here. I don't think I can do that. Super system. But these guys are young. They might, I don't know if they read super system. They might have read super system too. Ben, what was your uh, major at Stanford? Like math or economics or something? This guy, look at him. I he love it. I love it. Stone that's, face from Ben Yu. That's, that's, that's incredible. This is how he is. We're just playing with a big blind. You can We're call. You, you can call. You can cap it or you can fold. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't want to hear from you. If you're running dumber, you'd be a fire hydrant. <laughs> Platt. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to fold a second straight hand. He is going to lay it down. Alex. Oh, it is. The cat from Alex. Call. Ben. Ben makes the call. I like how Norman said he used to use that joke at the World Series of Poker. I think we've heard it a couple times. Ben and Alex to the flop. Let us see that flop question. Who wrote the seven card stud section of Doyle Brunson's classic strategy book, Super System? Answers, please. 3,600 in this pot. That will get one of you much closer to our chip leader, Norman Chad, who wrote the seven card stud section of Super System. All right, our answers are in. Ben, you are first to act. You can check or bet. Check. He will check it over to Alex. I'll bet. Alex will fire off a bet. Ben? Call. Ben will make the call. Let's see the correct answer first. That answer is, it's Chip Reese. Checking in with what our players had to say. Ben said Chip Reese. That is correct. Alex said Chip Reese. That is correct. Both of them get it right. Both of them move on to the turn with 4,400 chips in the middle. Let's see that turn question. What was the clickbaity original title of Doyle Brunson's poker strategy book? Answers, please. Super System originally titled blank. All right, our answers are in. As Norman checks out his piece in the New York Post, Ben, you are first to act. You can check or bet. Check. He will check it over to Alex. We'll bet. Alex will fire off a bet of 800. Ben. Call. Ben will make the call. Let's see the correct answer. That answer, how I made over $1 million playing poker. Was that clickbaity original title? Let's see what our players had to say. Ben said, Secrets of a World Champion, that is incorrect. Alex said, how I won over $1 million playing poker. Alex gets it right. Alex wins this hand. Alex moves in to second place. Taking a look at the chip counts. Norman Chad, the chip leader, at 23,200 in chips. Alex now in second with 19.6K. Ben in third with a little over 17,000. For this hand, Ben has the button. Norman is in the small blind. Alex is in the big blind. Let's take a look at this hands category. High roller of the year. Ben, you're on the button. You can raise, call, or fold. Raise. The snap raise, once again, from Ben Yu. Norman. Call. Norman will make the call. Alex? Call. Alex will make the call as well. The raise on the button from Ben Yu. Kind of the only high roller in this bunch. Let's see that flop question. Which tournament series was the latest edition of Poker Central's U.S. lineup of high-stakes events debuting in 2018? Answers, please. Norman, that was meant with all due respect to the $1,500 World Series events that you play. 
What tournament series was the newest addition to Poker Central's United States lineup of high stakes events? Yeah, does it help that one of these one of these players plays in that edition? Does it help or hurt? I mean, I would assume that it helps. Yeah, you're a quick study. Thank you. Get these guys. I think the same. All right, our answers are in. Norman, you're first to act. You can check or bet. I'll check as, as check as I'll check as long as a country road. Okay, I check. Think, think think that means check. Action on to Alex. I'll check. Alex will check as well. Ben. Bet. And keep the pedal to the metal. He will fire a Shock. bet of 400. Ben, Ben, two people check the Ben, and he bet in a category <laughs> in which he sleeps with the category, he eats with the category, he invented the category, and he wrote the question for the category. I dressed like Carrie Katz once, so I've dressed like the category too before. If you want to throw that onto him, your I list, gotta, I gotta give him, I gotta give him credit for the Carrie Katz thing. I forgot about that. That was amazing. You get, you get, you get props for that. I'll, I'll, I'll just give you chips right now, and I'll call. Norman will make the call. Alex? I'll call. Alex calls as well. Let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer? The U.S. Poker Open. Seeing who got it right. Norman said U.S. Poker Open. Alex said U.S. Poker Open. Ben said U.S. Poker Open. Everybody gets it right. Everybody moves on to the turn. Let's take a look at this turn question. This player from West Palm Beach, Florida won the inaugural High Roller of the Year in 2018. Answers, please. As of right now, if Alex wins this pot, he would be tied with Norman for the chip lead. But the pot yeah, could get bigger. Do me a favor, put all your updates on a piece of paper, okay. put a message in a bottle, and okay. put it into Lake Las Vegas, and I'll take a look at it next time I'm there fishing. Okay, you got it. I'll make a note of that. I'd kick their butts and wheel of fortune, trust me. Isn't that mostly luck? Yes, that's why I'd win. Got it. You put me up against a, a Stanford guy and a Yale guy. You're a Maryland guy, a Terp. Ma Maryland is like a disguised junior college. Oh my. It's run really well though, I must say. Uh, if I ever see you live again, I don't even know what's gonna happen. Looking forward to that 2020 World Series of Poker. All right, we need an answer. The clock has been called. I I is, is Alex still trying to type in Umberto? <laughs> Sorry. All right, there we go. Our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet 800. I'll check as long as the country road is. Okay, and we check. do believe that is a check. Over to Alex. I'll check. Alex will check. Over to Ben. Bet. The snap bet from Ben on the turn action back on Norman Chad, who's so I'm surprised shot. that Ben fired. Two people checked into stone faced Ben, and now Mr. High Roller is going to bet on a high roller category. This the whole thing is it's fixed, it's rigged. This is worse than the election. This is worse than the WWE. This is worse than, 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 the, than the whole thing that happened with Lindbergh's baby. I'm gonna just call and hope that I have a 25% chance of being right. He will call Alex? Yeah, I don't think I'm right either. I do not want this smug prick winning this title. Winning, I don't care if Ben wins the championship. I do not want him winning this hand. Our only chance of him winning this hand is you've called with the incorrect answer and then though you're right, though you think you're wrong. Sir, there is no you influencing other action at the tables? I'm well aware of that. Uh, I'll call. Alex will make the call. Let's take a look at the correct answer first. That answer, it's San Savaro. 20 caches and high roller events more than double any other player that year. We check in on Alex's answer first. You did have it right. You did say Sam Soverell on the Ben U and Ben said, Ben said Jake Schindler. That is incorrect. That is what Norman wanted. Alex wins this hand. Alex takes down a massive pot of 6K to become our chip leader. That will do it for level two. We are raising the stakes once again for level three next. Welcome back to the Big Blind, taking a look at the chip counts. Alex is our chip leader, 23,600 in chips. Norman in second with 21,200. Ben Yu in third with 15,200. What's on the line? A cool $15,000 for first place. Second place receives $10,000. Everybody assured of at least $5,000 at this point. Level three, the blinds are 300, 600. That means you can bet 600 on the flop, 1,200 on the turn. Norman has the button. Alex is in the small blind. Ben is in the big blind. For this category, business fails. Norman, you're on the button. You'll lead off our betting. Raise, call, or fold. Business fails? Business fails. The three, the, 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 everything in this game is either 
poker, Las Vegas, or gambling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is business fails. Mm -hmm. So maybe those businesses just might be related to. The and maybe they're not. Budget. But maybe yeah, they're I'll, not. I'll just, I'll just uh, check my option. Does that mean call? Yes, call. Okay, he will call over to Alex in the small blind. Alex, you can raise call or fold. He knows his options. I'll call. Alex will make the call. Ben, you can check your raise. Raise. Ben will raise it up. Action back on Norman. Yo, well, my grandparents came to this country. Oh, boy. One from Cuba, one from Lithuania. If they had known that I'd be sitting here today repeatedly watching check, check, raise from Ben Yu, who I assume is here legally, they would not be happy. They might have stayed in Cuba and in Lithuania. Every round's the same thing. We check, we bet that, and it was raised for you. A check's never good enough for you. Uh, okay, they... I'm now, okay, I am now, I am, I'm not, I'm on tilt mentally. I'm not on tilt as far as the game goes, but I am on tilt emotionally. I'm just gonna call. Okay, thank you. That was the call. Glad Norman's grandparents were able to help us out in the Revolutionary War. Alex. All right, I'll call. Let's see a flop. Alex will call as well. Let us take a look at that flop question. This failed poker league plan to have players compete inside a soundproof cube. Answers, please. Sure hope they had air conditioning. Answers, please. The failed poker league players competing inside a soundproof cube. All right, our answers are in. Alex, you are first act. You can check or bet. I'll check. Check it over to Ben. Bet. Ben will fire a bet. Norman. Call. Norman will make the call. Alex? I'll pull. Alex will lay it down. Before we see what Ben and Norman had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer, the Global Poker League, the GPL. Let's see who got this one right. Ben said the GPL, he got it. Norman said the XFL. That is incorrect. That was a decent guess though, Norman. I'm not even looking at you at any point of the rest of this broadcast. Taking a look at our chip counts now. Alex, our leader, 22,400 in chips. Norman in second with 19.4K. Ben clawing back after that win. 18,200 in chips for this hand. Alex has the button. Ben is in the small blind. Norman in the big blind taking a look at this category. The Rat Pack. Alex, you are on the button. You can lead off our betting, raise, call, or fold. A call. Call. Call from Alex. Ben. Call. Ben makes the call as well. Norman, you can check or raise. Uh, I'll just check. You will just check. Three players to this flop question. These three entertainers were considered the leaders of the 1960s Rat Pack. Answers, please. We need all three entertainers that were considered the leaders of the 1960s Rat Pack. All right, our answers are in. Ben, you're in the small line. You're first to act. You can check or bet. Check. We'll check it over to Norman. I, I will bet. That was a bet, bet from Norman over to Alex. We'll call. Alex makes the call. Ben? Call. Ben makes the call as well. Let's see the correct answer first. That answer? Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. The Rat Pack. Checking in on what our players had to say. Ben said Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra. Correct. Norman said Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. Correct. Alex said Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin. Everybody gets it right. Everybody moves on to the turn. Let's see that turn question. The Copa Room at what Las Vegas resort was considered the home of the Rat Pack? Answers, please. What resort in Vegas held the Copa Room, the home of the Rat Pack? Answers, please. Oh, I didn't hit it. Sorry. All right, our answers are in. Ben, you are first to act once again. You can check or bet 1,200. Check. You will check it over to Norman. Nothing up my sleeves. I will bet. He will fire that bet of 1,200 right into Alex. These kids can't know everything. It's before their time. Oh, call. Alex will make the call. Ben. Call. Ben will make the call as well. Let's see what the correct answer is. It's the Sands who got it right. Ben said, Sands, he is correct. Norman, 
said Sands. He is correct. Alex. Alex said Flamingo. That is incorrect. Alex is out of this hand. And with that news, we will have a new chip leader. It will be the winner of this river tiebreaker between Norman and Ben. Let's take a look at that tiebreaker question. The last of the three Rat Pack leaders passed away in what year? Answers, please. The last of the three Rat Pack leaders to pass passed away in what year? 7,200 chips in the middle. Will our new chip leader be Ben Yu or Norman Chad? Answers, please. All right, our oh. answers are uh, in. Yes, Norman, anything? No, I, I was going to change my answer, which I can't. That is true. Your it. answers are I... locked in. The last sorry. of the three sorry, 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 sorry. Rat Pack leaders to die, it. Frank Sinatra, the year that he died in? 1998. Let's see who was closest to 98. Like difference. Ben Yu said 1997. Pretty good guess. Just one year off. Norman said... 1999, oh. pretty good guess. Just one year off. They're both one oh. year off, and they will chop this pot. I was gonna change my answer to 97, believe it or not. Okay, okay, I, so like you said, I, I just, it wouldn't have mattered. I remember, it's still one year off. It wouldn't have mattered. I remember it, it, there's a 20 year anniversary, and it couldn't have been this year, because they did a 20 year anniversary on him, and so I thought it was a year or two ago. I was gonna change it to 97. That's and let's funny. take a look at these chip counts as we enter the final hand of the third level in the finals, Norman Chad has 20,600. Alex Jacob has starting stack of 20K, and Ben Yu has 19,400. Everybody is right there. What a matchup this is. Ben has the button, Norman in the small blind, Alex in the big blind for this category. Live poker, fun facts. Ben, you can raise, call, or fold. Yeah, this has been a good tight game. Good game, whatever happens here. It's been very compelling and very competitive. Raise. Ben will raise it up. Over to Norman. All right, so there's been, I'm the knit. Alex is the genius outside of here. And then sure. we got the maniac who keeps racing. So I'm just going to call. He's, Try to knit my way to third place is worse. He is just going to call. Alex. I'll call. Alex will call as well. We are three-handed to this flop what is the largest poker room in the world answers please the largest poker room in the world 3600 in chips in the middle who becomes the chip leader after this hand The clock has been called. Our answers are in. Norman, you are first to act. You can check or bet. I'm not betting. That would be a check so then much. over to Alex. Alex, you can check or bet 600. Just like playing with Doc Sands all day. <laughs> um, I bet. Alex will bet over to Ben. Call. Ben makes the call, Norman. Call. Norman makes the call. Before we see what our three players had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. That answer is the Commerce Casino with capacity for over 200 tables. Seeing which of our players got it right. Norman said Commerce. Alex said Commerce. Ben said Commerce. Everybody gets it right. Everybody moves on to the turn with 5,400 in chips in the middle. Let us see that turn question. In 2019, the Aria Poker Room changed the name of the high limit area from Ivy's Room to what? Answers, please. The Aria Poker Room changed the name of Ivy's room to what? They considered naming it after Norman Chad. For some you reason. You know, that's just not necessary. All right, our answers are in. Norman, your first act, you can check or bet 1,200. I check. He will check it over to Alex. I'll check. Alex will check it over to Ben. Bet. Ben will fire off a bet of 1,200 into Norman. Call. Norman makes the call. Alex? 
Uh, hold. Alex will lay it down. Let's see what the correct answer is. It's table one. Name change probably made to distance the casino from Ivy's ongoing legal struggles. Let's see what our players had to say. Norman said, table one. That is correct. Good fold by Alex. He had said Doyle's room. Ben said, table one. Both Ben and Norman move on to a massive river tiebreaker. 7,800 in chips in the middle. Let's see that tiebreaker question. Phil Locke set the Guinness World Record for the longest ever continuous poker session. How many hours did he play for? Answers, please. The rules of this record attempt, fairly simple. Videotaped, witness present, five minute break every hour. Could accumulate your break time. By the way, table one, that room's a high roller room. We got a high roller guy here again. What's your point? I think my point is self-evident. <laughs> 7,800 in chips in the middle. A jam-packed final three. $15,000 on the line. Who gets this before our two against the house rounds? All right, our answers are in. Before we see what Ben and Norman had to say, let's take a look at the correct answer. Phil Locke played for 115 hours straight over four days at the Bellagio in June of 2010. By the way, Alex nailed this. He had 115. He's not in this hand. We'll check in with who is. Excellent. Norman said 103 hours. Not a bad guess. 12 hours off the mark. Can Ben get closer than that? Ben said. 99 hours, slightly further away. That means Norman Chad wins this hand. That means Norman Chad takes the chip lead. Our players go against the house next. Back here on the big blind, taking a look at our chip counts. Norman Chad has 25,400 in chips. He is the chip leader, but not by too much. Alex has 18,200. Ben is in third with 16,400. Now we enter the first of two against the house rounds, taking their stacks from the poker table, entering the pit to fire off against the casino. What's on the line? About $15,000 for first, $10,000 for second, $5,000 for third place. This gives me one more opportunity to show off our lovely poker bracelet. Let's see if I can do this very dramatically. The slow open of the box, it's a little tight, a little jammed up. Oh, that's because I was opening it the wrong way. And there we go, there we have it. Our poker champion bracelet, valued at $44.95. Gonna be honest, we negotiated the guy down a little bit. So that gets to the winner, I guess, along with $15,000. You guys just care about the money. Our players have the option to wager as much or as little of their stack as they so choose. They will see a video featuring a hand from a cash game and a multiple choice question on what action will take place next. So gentlemen, please, Send in your wagers. Ben has up to 16,400 in chips to wager with. Alex has up to 18,200 in chips to wager with. And Norman has 25,400 chips to wager with. We need all wagers in, please. <laughs> Norman. There we go. Our wagers are in. Let us take a look at the first against the house hand. JRB will open the action with eight six of hearts, raising to 3,500. Ivy's got a pair of deuces, he calls, and Antonio on the button with five four off suit. And uh, looks like he wants in on the action. Yeah, even though he only has a five four off suit, which isn't a particularly good hand, he's in position, playing deep stack, no limit. First JRB and Mr. Ivy, it's a good enough situation to take a flop. <laughs> yeah, good enough indeed. Ace, three, deuce. Well, this is going to be interesting. Blonde with a flush draw, Ivy with bottom set, and Antonio with the stone cold nuts at the moment. But a lot can change on this board. Ivy called after Blonde bet 8,000. Notice at this point if the board pairs or if a heart comes, Antonio is drawing dead. Antonio is not going to slow play this. He raises to 28,000. And even though JRB has a flush draw here, I actually like folding. Because if he's up against it, let's say Phil has something like King 10 of Hearts and Antonio has a made hand. It's such a bad spot. And if you hit a flush with the only flush draw, 
sometimes it might be hard to win a big pot for these guys, so I don't, I don't really like calling that 20 to just sort of try to hit a heart. Mm. Phil, however, isn't going anywhere. About a hundred grand in the pot right now, heading for the turn. And a jack of spades, a brick for Beland and Ivy. For Ivy, it's actually, he sort of wants to see bricks if the board doesn't pair because he probably figures in a multi-way pot he's up against at least one flush draw. For Antonio, that's a dream turn card. Antonio decides the price is $68,000. I think you're going to see Ivy call here. It's tough. You can't just start folding sets on the turn. Playing no limit hold'em versus players capable as Antonio because he could have flush draws, he could have semi bluffs, and he could be as weak as having a hand like King Five of Clubs, where he's just sort of taking the initiative, has a gut shot, and uh, is just making a bold play. You have to take one more card off, but the river could get interesting. Phil calls here, and the King does not fill up Ivy. Antonio has the best hand. That he does, and he's certainly going to bet. The question is how much. You heard Nick Shulman. The question is how much. How much does Antonio bet here? $85,000, $153,000, $222,000, or does Antonio say all the chips? Answers, please. Antonio flops French. the nuts by the end of the hand. It's the second nuts. Higher 68K yeah. on the turn. How much on the river? Yes, Norman? I'm at a disadvantage here. And why is that? Why would you think? Well, I have a long list of disadvantages that you may have against Alex and Ben. But which Any one, one of them are referring apply. to? Okay, gotcha. All right, our answers are in. Let's see how much Antonio bets. Phil could have ace-jack or now ace-king, and it's hard to get value with ace-three on this run out. Wow. So Phil's hand is almost a bluff catcher. Big bet from Antonio on $153,000. Antonio could show up with ace-king sometimes, but I think Phil thinks that he'd probably three-bet that pre-flop, and conversely, he would probably just call with that on the flop. Visibly disgusted, Phil Ivy. <laughs> That's fair. Antonio fires $153,000, gets paid off from Ivy. Let's take a look at Ben's answer first. Ben said $85,000. That is incorrect. How much did he wager? 69 total. Nice. Ben moves down to 16,331 in chips. We go to Alex Jacob next. He said 153K. He nailed it. How much did he wager? Absolutely zero. Nothing from Alex. He stays at 18,200 in chips. We go on to Norman Chad. Norman said Antonio moved all in. That is incorrect. Norman wagered. We know it's incorrect. 2,400. That moves Norman down to 23K. Let's look at the leaderboard again. Norman Chad with 23,000. Alex Jacob with 18,200. Ben Yu with 16,331. Again, Norman, you did get that one wrong. I just want to confirm. I, I made the biggest bet of the three. They're, they're game theory experts. I don't know what I'm doing. They virtually bet nothing. I thought I had no chance to answer the question, so I bet low. They bet lower than me, and they were smarter than me. What are the chip totals so I can see going to this final thing? And now, our final level of the season. Our players go against the house one more time with $15,000 on the line. Again, they can wager as much or as little of their stack as they so choose. They will once again see a video featuring a hand from a cash game, this time a multiple choice question on what hand a player has. So gentlemen, please send in your final wagers. I know I can't see the video beforehand, but can at least I know what the, who the announcers are for this hand, that'll help. No, you cannot. Okay. Is there any possibility, just ask the production team, can I know who the announcers are for this hand, that would help. They, they said no. But they said the host of the Big Blind is me, Jeff Platt, just in case you wanted to know that. 
should have done what Alex does. What's he, what's he looking at? What's he looking at? I, I don't understand what he does. It works. This music makes it sound like the apocalypse is on the way! Can we shut the music? We're ramping up the drama and the intensity. For the finals, the clock has been called. We need all wagers. All right, our wagers are in. Let's take a look at this hand from Poker After Dark. Juan plays right back at him for an extra 11,000. the Tom Dwan they paid to see. Just don't see how I can fold this hand. I got a massive fucking hand, by the way. Massive. I mean, if you got me beat, it's so cold-blooded. There's like almost zero chance I fold here, but I'm just gonna let you, uh... Whew. Tom, it's like you check back the flop. When I call your hundred thousand on the turn now, you either have to have top two or set, or you can't value me betting anything else. It's possible you just check back a set of jacks on the flop. Check back a set of jacks on the flop. There's no way you check back two kings and hit a set of kings. You could have said check back jack king and hit kings and jacks. Wow. I got it. my hand's way too big to fold. We know JRB had a massive hand. JRB makes the call. What does Tom Dwan have here? King Jack, Queen Ten of Hearts, Pocket Jacks, or the Ten Nine of Spades? Answers, please. $15,000 on the line here for our players. A cool 10K for second, 5K for third. Why does Alex even care? He, he won like 37 straight times on Jeopardy for like a million bucks. So this is peanuts. Ben Yu plays like 2,000, 4,000. I'm playing 2040 with a half kill. 2040 with a half kill. 
What does Tom Dwan have here? The King Jack, the Queen Ten of Hearts, the Pocket Jacks, or the Ten Nine of Spades? The bet of 170k on the river from Dwan, the call from JRB. Answers, please. All right, our answers are in. Before we see what our players had to say, let's take a look at what happens here at what Tom Dwan had. Kaboom. That's it. Mm. This Cold-blooded. You got the flop, you get it all. There it was, the pocket jacks for Tom Dwan, set over set. Let's see what our contestants weighed in with here in the finals. Let's take a look at Ben Yu's answer first. Ben said, the 10-9 of spades. That is incorrect. How much did he wager? He wagered 7,000. That means Ben will end this game with 9,331 in chips. Next, we move on to Alex Jacob. What did Alex say? He said the 10 9 of spades as well is also incorrect. How much did he wager? He just wagered 1,799 in chips. So that drops Alex down to 16,401. It all comes down to this. Let's take a look at Norman Chad's answer first. He says, he says the queen 10. That is incorrect. How much did Norman wager? 800. And 17. So that means Norman Chad ends this game with 22,183 in chips. Congratulations, Norman Chad. You have won the big blind and $15,000. You know, I grew up in a rough and tumble middle class neighborhood, and all the smart kids went to Duke and Princeton and Michigan, and I had to work at TGI Fridays, and, and I went to the University of Maryland. And, and when I was 36 or 37 years old, it was my, I, my dream was to win a Pulitzer Prize, but ever since then, I've always dreamed of winning the big blind. Uh, this is just terrific. I beat two terrific people, two terrific players, and I had to get lucky four straight rounds, trust me. And unfortunately, I could not cut off Norman Chad during that victory speech. I had planned to, but the producers were in my ear. They said he won, he deserves it, let him go. Norman Chad takes down $15,000. Alex Jacob, you finished in second place. Congratulations on the 10K spike. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to uh, lose to the legend. <laughs> and it was great having you here. Ben Yu, you're in third, you're in the money. You take home 5K. Thank you for playing, my friend. Congratulations to Norman. This was a lot of fun. Uh, especially for our first run, it was really pretty well designed. And we got a lot of things right, I think, about the structure, actually. There, there was a lot of play to it, I feel like. And uh, thank you for having me. Well, that means a lot to us coming from you, Mr. Ben Yu. It is Norman Chad who conquered all the champion of the big blind. That will do it for this season. Thanks so much to our players. Thanks so much to our crew, the best in the business. Special shout out to the creator of this fantastic show, Mr. John Bovenizer. Thank you to you all for watching. We will catch you next time on The Big Blind. I'm Jeff Platt from Las Vegas at the Poker Go studio. Goodbye. You're, you're gonna end up on a structure comment? He's talking about structure.